Did you know there are 25 different license plate designs for military veterans? Hi and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Patterson. On today's show, we'll take a look at the specialty license plate program. And did you know that floods cause more damage than any other natural disaster? We'll fill you in on why it's important to take in your beach furniture after some fun in the sun. Health reporter Stephanie Strong has some information for us about the benefits of being smoke free. Here and now reporter Kendra Lee takes us to the Friday Night Market in Deland's Artisan Alley. And finally, Community Information Director Dave Byron sits down for a chat with his guest, Rob Earhart of Economic Development. Those segments, news and more coming right up on Volusia Magazine. Stay tuned. Florida has 120 specialty license plate designs. In addition to the standard license plate, drivers can select from many unique plates including those commemorating schools, sports teams, wildlife and environmental and health concerns. Current and former members of the military can choose from 25 Florida specialty plates honoring their service. The plates include the five branches of the armed forces along with the National Guard, U.S. Reserve and designs recognizing military honors and disabilities. We have a paratrooper tag so you would have to come in and show us that you, um, you know, were a paratrooper, that you went to the jump school. Um, the Purple Heart tag, you have to bring in your DD-214 and, and you have to verify that you are a recipient. Um, you know, the disabled veterans license plates. Again, you have to have a certain degree of disability before you're even entitled to that. Um, so there is a lot of documentation you have to bring in, a lot of verification. Veterans can select plates that indicate which war or conflict they served in, recently redesigned plates for the Vietnam and Korean Wars, Operation Desert Storm, and other conflicts include designs of the designated campaign medals. They're entitled to it, they've served in that, that war, that conflict, um, or they've earned a Purple Heart, and so they, you know, they're very proud of that and they want to, um, to display that. Other available military plates include Pearl Harbor Survivor, XPOW, Combat Medical Badge, and Combat Action Badge. Non-military residents can show their support too by purchasing the Florida Salutes Veterans Tag. The $15 additional fee goes to state homes for veterans trust funds. Before this, the, the tag even goes for sale, um, it's determined what percentage of the proceeds go where. And then those fees are turned over to the state and they distribute it to the appropriate agencies. Specialty plates cost $15 to $25 a year above the standard registration fee. In 2013, more than 137,000 specialty tags were sold in Florida and 1.2 million were renewed, creating revenue of nearly $34 million. To learn more about specialty plates, you can visit flhsmv.gov slash specialty tags. Floods cause more deaths and property damage than any other disaster. With hurricane season right around the corner, it's time for homeowners to consider purchasing flood insurance. Anywhere it rains, it can flood, even for properties that aren't near any bodies of water. All it takes is a few inches of water to cause major damage to a home and to its contents. Pat White is the Volusia Prepares Coordinator with Volusia County's Emergency Management Division. Many people believe that they're covered for flood by their homeowner's insurance. That's not true. Homeowners only protect them against wind and other perils besides flood. You need to have flood insurance to be covered for any kind of rising water event that might happen. Flood insurance is available through the National Flood Insurance Program for homes, condos, apartments, and commercial structures. The rates recently increased slightly. The average premium is now $700 a year, but flood insurance can be purchased for as little as $137 a year for homeowners who live in a low-risk area. Renters, they pay even less. Policies start at $44 a year. In Florida, floods are caused by tropical storms, hurricanes, excessive rainfall, and water backup due to overloaded drainage systems. 
Homeowners can determine their flood risk by going to floodsmart.gov. Even homes that are not in a floodplain can be at risk for flash floods or damage due to heavy rains. In fact, about 25% of flood loss claims comes from low-risk areas. Homeowners shouldn't wait for a hurricane to purchase flood insurance. It takes 30 days after purchase for a flood insurance policy to take effect. Also, if a hurricane is within 500 miles of Florida, flood insurance policies will not be written. So the time to get flood coverage is now before a hurricane strikes. For more information about the National Flood Insurance Program, you can go to floodsmart.gov. Here's a reminder to visitors to Volusia County's beaches. After a long and fun day at the beach when it's time to go home, don't forget your chair and your umbrella. Some beachgoers have been leaving their beach furniture behind and it's creating problems. It's not only an eyesore, it's a safety hazard for people and for wildlife. Some of the items that are left on the beach are umbrellas, chairs, um, different personal items, toys, um, things like that that are left on a beach become a, an obstacle for people on the beach at night. So we're, what we're asking people to do is daily, when you leave the beach at the end of the day, to leave nothing on the beach other than your footprints. If you leave furniture on the beach and somebody's running at night and it's not lit up, especially during turtle season, and they trip over an item that's on the, that's on the ground. So you want to make sure you pick up all your stuff. Items left on the beach overnight during sea turtle nesting season can result in abandoned nesting attempts. These items also can be fatal for tiny hatchlings that cannot overcome the obstacles. Each night, beach safety employees and sea turtle volunteers leave tags on abandoned furniture asking the owners to remove their items from the beach. Most of these items are behind condos and timeshares in the northern and southern sections of Volusia County. Another problem is holes people dig and leave unfilled. Some of these holes are really deep. People and wildlife walking on the beach after dark can fall into a hole and they can get hurt. People like to dig holes and holes are a hazard because if you dig a hole and whatever deep you dig it, when you leave the beach, if you leave that hole uncovered, then somebody could be running down the beach or walking down the beach at night and fall into that hole, uh, causing some injuries to them. The next time you visit a beach, take your beach furniture with you and fill your holes. Make the beach safer for everyone, humans and wildlife alike. Many of the items you throw out are not biodegradable and take centuries to break down. Reduce, reuse, recycle are separate but interconnected ideas that minimizes waste and saves money. The process is simple. The best way to reduce waste is to avoid creating it. According to the EPA, on average, Americans each produce over four pounds of trash per day. To help reduce trash, switch from plastic to reusable bags. Next, reuse items destined to be discarded. Get creative in reusing trash to reduce waste and save money. Finally, recycling takes items from materials that are discarded and turns them into new products. For example, plastic bottles can be recycled into carpet and benches. Many communities make recycling easy by offering programs such as curbside pickup. Newspaper, plastic bottles, glass, and pop cans are all recyclable items. Reduce, reuse, recycle decreases the amount of waste people create. Help keep our earth clean. Make the choice to reduce, reuse, and recycle today. For more information on Volusia County's recycling program, you can visit volusia.org and select Recycling from the drop-down menu. Downtown Deland just took on a new form of nightlife. In this week's Volusia Here and Now, reporter Kendra Lee has more on what to expect each Friday night in Artisan Alley. Many may be familiar with downtown Deland during the day quaint city with lots of shops, restaurants, and scenic offerings. But what you may not know is that Deland is now offering a new feature on Friday nights. West New York and West Georgia Avenues, Artisan Alley attracts hundreds of people and dozens of vendors to the Artisan Alley Farmer's Market. The Farmer's Market is every Friday night from 6 to 9 o'clock. 
and um, we're going on our um, on our starting our third year down here, and um, we have vegetables and other goods that are all uh, made by the vendors themselves. It's a everything is locally made, and everything is um, locally produced. It's a grower producers market is how we is is how we call what we call it. One of the unique things about this local farmer's market is that it happens at night when downtown Deland comes alive, also helping to support other local businesses on the Strip. Not only does the market offer local and organically produced goods, it also offers a unique opportunity to browse the shops in the Strip, listen to local musicians, and try new beverage and dining experiences. Some goods you can expect to see in the alley include fresh produce, cold pressed juice, organic coffee, gluten-free pastries, handmade jewelry, and even grain-free pet treats. What people come and find is, is um, a really nice selection of locally grown vegetables, a safe and pleasant shopping um, environment uh, where they can also maybe pop in at a gift shop in the alley and look around and browse. Maybe you can drink wine and beer inside of the alley. It's a very casual and um, fun shopping environment and just a, kind of a hangout. I mean, people actually come and just meet up with their friends and walk around and bring their kids and go and watch the bats come out of the big bat house in the, when the sun sets and, you know, just kind of hang out. And locals agree, the market provides an opportunity to relax and socialize while enjoying the local farmers and businesses that do not have a permanent storefront to offer. I shop here because the produce is organic and it's local and it's just like you're picking it yourself from your own garden and they're doing the work and I'm not. <laughs> so it's great. I mean, I have this fabulous diet living here because I get all my food fresh and I eat what's in season and um, it's just great. The market isn't just a success for county residents. Local vendors see profit from the nighttime marketplace as well. As a growers only farmers market, co founder Nizi Nyland, a small farmer in the area, has set a high standard to become a vendor. Well, they have to make it, their own produce, you know, if you pick or something like that, they have, or they have to grow their own vegetable and have to be 50 miles, you know, have to be local and no, no resell and have to be organic and you know that's one of the things it's like this market would be nice to have people selling which makes culture right I'm from Brazil there is Spanish people there Thai people there so that is the idea because we all have you know something interest to grow or to make it if your Friday nights need something new, the Artisan Alley Farmer's Market has a lot to offer. For more information on the market or to become a vendor, visit their Facebook at facebook.com front slash Farmer's Market and the Artisan Alley to land. For Volusia Here and Now, I'm Kendra Lee. Everyone has their own reasons for quitting smoking. Maybe you want to be healthier, save some money, or keep your family safe. Whatever your reasons will be, you'll be amazed at all the ways your life will improve when you become smoke-free. Stephanie Strong introduces us to three former smokers who are oh so glad to be smoke-free in this segment of Community Health Matters. Hi, my name is Liz and I'm a cancer survivor, and I've been smoke-free for 13 months. Hi, my name is Stephanie, and I've been smoke-free for three years. Hi, my name is Liz, and I've been smoke-free for two years, a little over two years, actually, and I feel so much better. These former smokers hope that their personal stories will inspire smokers to quit. Well, I started when I was 12. You know, a couple here, a couple there. By the time I was 16, I was smoking a pack a day, and I smoked for 49 years. One day, doctors told Liz the terrible news. She had lung cancer. I didn't have to do chemo. I didn't have to do radiation, so I came out really pretty good, but I still lost part of my lung. I smoked about a half a pack a day for about 10 years. I started when I was 11 years old, um, and I, I smoked 
um, pretty much up until the end of college. Everyone in my family smoked, so that was just something that I expected that I was going to do when I grew up. I, I was going to be a smoker because my mom was and my dad was. It was limiting a lot of the things that I wanted to do. I had a lot of interest in athletics, but I'd never tried anything. And I, um, I actually signed up for boxing, and I was still smoking. And it just took the wind out of me, and I couldn't complete a training session. And I knew that I had to make a change so I could actually participate in the things that I liked and, and enjoyed. You'll find Lizanne relaxing in her peaceful garden. She used to smoke here. Now she just relaxes. The beautiful landscaping provides tranquility as she reflects on her journey to become smoke free. Lizanne is thankful that her tobacco smoking days are behind her and her husband has also kicked the habit. I pretty much smoked uh, my whole adult life. Uh, I did quit a couple of times but always started back up again when something stressful came along and uh, and then I, uh, I stopped two years ago when uh, my husband who also smoked had a scare with throat cancer. He thought he had throat cancer. Uh, thank God, it turns out he did not, but um, we thought he did, and so we both quit on the same day. We threw our cigarettes away, and we never started smoking again. Smoke-free Stephanie loves physical activity. She enjoys a good walk, and smoke-free Liz has her work to keep her busy. The first thing that really is good is the Florida Quit Line. They'll give you patches, they'll give you gum, they'll assist you with support, and that's really good. I think that you share with your friends and family what you're doing to hold yourself accountable. I would say to others who are struggling, don't wait until something happens. Quit now and then you'll start feeling so much better. We feel 100% better. A great way to prepare to quit smoking is to create a quit plan. Quit plans combine quit smoking strategies to keep you focused, confident, and motivated to quit. Help you identify challenges you will face as you quit and ways to overcome them. And can improve your chances of quitting smoking for good. Smoking causes immediate and long-term damage to the body, including heart disease, diabetes, and many types of cancer. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Stephanie Strong, Public Information Officer for the Florida Department of Health in Volusia County. It's time now to head into the studio to join our very own Community Information Director Dave Byron and his guest Rob Earhart of Economic Development. Thanks Amber and hi everyone. Well as 2015 gets into full swing, we're almost halfway into the year. The economy, both nationally and locally, continues to be on the upswing and there are no indications of a slowdown. The county's Economic Development Division keeps very close tabs on several indicators as part of its monitoring of the local economy. Today we'll talk about some of those indicators for the first quarter of 2015. Our studio guest is Rob Earhart. He's the county's Economic Development Director. Rob, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Dave. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for being here. We have you every uh, three months or so. Uh, it's nice to talk about good news. Uh, you know, overall, uh, things seem to be going pretty well. All the indicators continue to look positive uh, for the economy nationally in the state of Florida, locally as well, Dave. Starting nationally, gross domestic product for the first quarter of 2015, the advance estimate is 0.2%. Uh, wow. uh, not a great number, but when you contrast that to the same time period a year ago, and it was minus 2.1, mm -hmm. a lot of similar circumstances, brutal winter, etc. Uh, you know, it takes on a different perspective. Well, what do you think uh, locally? What do you see uh, in terms of the general uh, landscape economically in Volusia County? Well, the obvious indicators, unemployment uh, came in for March of 2015 at 5.8%, so that's down from 7% a year ago, so that's certainly... An Going approach. in the right direction there. Going in the right direction. The number of unemployed, you know, I like to pay attention to that number, right. is below 14,000. Uh, that's only the second time since May of 2008, so... Uh, that doesn't speak to all of the issues in the uh, labor statistics. Certainly there are still right. people that are, uh, uh, the numbers or the economists suggest are not yet part of the, right. the workforce and uh, there's certainly some unemployed, or excuse me, underemployed numbers and I think right. we saw that uh, in one of the job fairs recently for the Regional Distribution Center, some 1,200 people turned out for 
a large number of positions and uh, the Career Source Flagler Volusia organization estimates that almost a third of those already have positions and so they're seeking uh, a step up in their employment. I think one of the terms that, that you've coined is uh, economic development ecosystem. And, uh, you know, we've talked about the fact that it seems like in the last two or three years, everyone's roles and responsibilities have been pretty much defined now. You know, the team Volusia was out on the road recruiting new companies, and the county, of course, is trying to pay attention for the retention and expansion of local companies. Uh, that strategy seems to be working pretty well. Well, we believe it is. Uh, there are uh, over 11,000 established businesses, so it's a challenge to touch each and every one of those every year. So it's important that we work closely with uh, our partners in the ecosystem. Right. People like the Chambers of Commerce. There are eight uh, Chambers of Commerce in Volusia County. Uh, the SBDC, Small Business Development Center at Daytona State College, SCORE, Career Source, and others, uh, so that we all work closely in a coordinated way so we can touch as many of these businesses as we can. And, and we're particularly interested in talking to growth-oriented uh, business owners who are you know, seeking, how do I grow top-line revenue? Right. How do I overcome an issue that's uh, preventing me from growing? How do I overcome an issue right. that's really uh, impacting the efficiency of my business to be able to get my orders out on a regular basis? So there are a lot of opportunities there. We've talked about the importance of our colleges and universities. Uh, you know, recently it was announced that uh, JetBlue uh, Airlines is going to start service at Daytona Beach International Airport first part of next year. And our very uh, key piece of landing that uh, New York-based uh, airline was Emory Riddle Aeronautical University. I mean, they were they were key. Absolutely, as was the business community sure. and all the people that participated and pulled together in the same way toward a common goal. And uh, I think everybody would agree we're going to be much stronger as a as a community and much more successful. Uh, and that, again, going back to Team Volusia, as much as uh, we appreciate what Keith is doing individually and his staff, it's a platform that also gives. Uh, a lot of opportunity for the community to feel like, again, we're all part of the uh, same effort, we're all rowing together, right. we're in the same boat, we're all trying to street, strive toward a common goal. And I guess the best example of that recently was this uh, Trader Joe's warehouse, which is now just about ready to open. And uh, I've heard you say, and many others say, you know, if it wasn't for everyone ex working very closely together with the same end goal, uh, that, that project might not have happened. So it's a good uh, good example of teamwork there. Well, particularly when you recognize that you really need the private sector to be right. involved in uh, any of these deals are, that are really going to be uh, transformative for right. our community and certainly uh, the landowner in this that particular deal, Consolidate, Tomoka and others that participated, uh, with, without all of the partners I, I think we would have been challenged to, to have right. that success. Let's look at uh, some of the indicators uh, that you, you continue to look at as you monitor the local economy. One of the things that uh, you gather and monitor uh, is building permit data. Uh, what's the story with the building permit data? Let's start with the housing side of things. So on the residential side we look at new construction permits, not right. necessarily the sale of uh, existing homes. Right. And uh, so those numbers uh, came in slightly lower for uh, the first quarter of 2015 right. as compared to the same quarter in 2014. I say slightly lower, is actually in the 24, 25% range lower. Right. Um, and uh, the Volusia Building Industry Association uh, attributes that primarily to two issues. One, the availability of readily buildable lots. Right. And um, secondly, the availability of certain skilled labor. And I think that reflects on uh, a question that's being asked now, and that is the growth that's taking place throughout our county. Is it just a normal course of action coming out of a recession, or is there some pent-up demand that we've uh, been able to address successfully over the past few years, or are we really in a position to take things to the next level? And I, I think there are some of those, and certainly in the housing uh, industry, there was a pent-up uh, demand or availability, I should say, of buildable lots, and a lot of those are gone. So. Now it's back to um, being able to do some strategic uh, visioning uh, for these uh, local builders and right. saying, where am I going to be a year or three or five years from now? Well, a couple of factors I think, Rob, uh, on this uh, residential side is uh, people like myself who are baby boomers uh, living up in the Northeast or wherever they might be continue to come to Florida in good numbers. I think that's in influencing a lot of things in Florida. And second of all, the interest rates uh, are, are quite low. You know, we uh, take a look at interest rates, Dave, and I remember uh, I'm in my late 50s. I remember my first mortgage was at over 12 percent. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, whether I get a three and a half or a four or four and a half or even five percent mortgage. Looks uh, good, right? It looks very good. So <laughs> you're right. I, I think with another winter like we've had in the U.S., particularly the Northeast, the Midwest, 
uh, with people's uh, equity in, the, in their homes in those locations improving, and certainly with the stock market continuing to circle at historic highs, uh, and therefore people feeling you know very comfortable about their uh, retirement portfolios, right. I, I think we are well primed uh, to compete for those people as they start looking hard at the state of Florida. And I think we're seeing, an, uh, you know, the upside of, of that residential growth, Rob, and the fact that there are new restaurants being built, new uh, uh, retail operations coming into uh, Volusia County. In fact, you know, there's a talk of a big outlet mall that, that's taken a look at uh, at Volusia County, Daytona Beach. Uh, all of that seems to, to bode quite well for uh, what companies are thinking about the long-term future of this area. Companies and individuals. So right. again, uh, all of those, I think, create a buzz, create a top-of-mind awareness outside of the county, whether it's somewhere in the state or, or right. somewhere in the Northeast. And they go, Volusia County, probably challenged to put their finger on the map uh, accurately and say where Volusia County is, but when they look into it based on what they're hearing, they go, wow, look at where it is, great location, East Central Florida, right, right there at the crossroads of uh, Interstate 4 and Interstate 95, and really start doing their due diligence, whether it's a personal decision or a business decision. Um, I, you know, again, I think we have a, an opportunity to compete. What do you see uh, in terms of the building permit activity on the commercial side, Rob? Uh, on the commercial side, you know, I'll tell you, it's a mixed bag. Uh, we have uh, a couple of quarters that are really blow out, uh, based primarily right. on large permits for uh, one project, Daytona Rising. But, uh, I, you know, I think there's a steady uh, crescendo building over time. Uh, we've had uh, in 2012 to 2013 uh, almost 50 percent growth in total uh, permits from 2013 to 2014, almost uh, 26, 27 percent growth first quarter. Um, we're off to a little bit slower start than we were as compared to last year, but we're significantly improved over the same quarter in 2013. So, again, uh, some of the uh, influencers and factors that we've been talking about just now, I think there are a lot of people looking at our area, a lot of people that are really uh, looking at the financial model uh, for locating here, and I, I think we have reason to be very optimistic. Well, Rob, uh, lots more to talk about, but no time. Uh, you've got lots of information available through... Uh, your website and through your office. If people want more information, uh, how do they get a hold of you or get more information? Dave, if they want to call our office, they can do so at 386-248-8048, or they can just go on our website at floridabusiness.org. Uh, there's four key tabs across the top. We try to make uh, that website user-friendly. If they're more familiar with the county's website, volusia.org, just look for the economic development link, and that'll take you right to that same website. And uh, finally, uh, are you or members of your staff available for civic group presentations or that sort of thing? Absolutely. Our guest today, Rob Earhart, uh, Economic Development Director with Volusia County. Rob, thank you very much for being with us. Dave, thanks so much for having me. And with that, Amber, we'll go back to you. Thanks, Dave, and thank you for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about the show, you can feel free to give us a call at any of the numbers you see listed here or you can log on to volusia.org and click on the News tab at the top of the screen to find us. Incidentally, you can find the County Council's meeting calendar there too. In fact, you can use volusia.org to find out about meeting dates, workshops, topics of interest, activities, and how you can become involved. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today. That's Volusia County Government's weekly public radio broadcast. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Patterson. Have a wonderful evening.